We have two issues that we've identified. The the vulnerability or susceptibility of power yeah. to be exploited yeah. to abuse, uh -huh. which we've seen more in, in women. Yeah. And then you have almost this, uh, it's almost like it, it, if you're a man and this happens to you, what you feel like you should do is you have to take it for the team. Yeah, yeah. Because there's bigger things at play yeah. here. Right, so this kind of thing happens. So it creates kind of this cone of silence and people are just ignoring it because they know that they're winning and winning tends mm. to cure all problems, uh, at least for a time, it seems like. Right, so what are these whole ideas about locker room, this, this almost social covenant mm -hmm. that professionals make with themselves and our perspective then as a culture and society of how we view them. Yeah. What do you think that highlights about our perspectives about manhood? Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Kingdom Thinking. How you doing, Josh? Good, man. Excellent. It's uh, winter time, almost. Yep. Kind of fall, winter time. Yep. So, you know, things are getting cooler on the West Coast. But you're still bringing the fire. But I'm still bringing the heat. Uh, and I got a hot one for you today. Na, na, na. Uh, very actually sad case. Uh, Boo. This week, uh, uh, NHL former professional hockey player publicly came out in a video, very emotional video, um, identified himself as the person who is suing the Chicago Blackhawks, a professional team in the National Hockey League, mm -hmm. for their mishandling of his sexual assault mm -hmm. um, claims in 2010. So essentially what happened is 11 years ago t in 2010, the Chicago Blackhawks uh, won the Stanley Cup. They won the whole tournament, the championship, on their way to that uh, journey. Uh, Kyle Beach, the former player at that time, he reported the video coach at that time, Brad Aldrich, I think that's how you say his name, um, for sexually assaulting him. Mm -hmm. uh, players knew about it, coach knew about it, manager knew about it, uh, all the way up to ownership. And nothing was done that season for sure right uh and then even the next season basically hr told him he's like hey is this really worth your trouble you probably should just quit move on so the guy quit move on and then he sexually assaulted a minor and eventually went to jail for it so <clears throat> this is now a big conversation in the sports world surrounding this team um and uh, i think in all of pro sports of how to continue to uh prevent filter out and fight against sexual assault both for anybody right doesn't matter uh i think about how frequent sexual harassment is in women's sports uh i think about the horrible incidents for the gymnasts mm -hmm. for uh the u.s gymnasts and it happens to men as well so this is crazy but i, I have a, a few thoughts my my first reaction is man when i think about the incredible force and power that there is in the power dynamics um not only in pro sports, but I think about the corporate world in mm -hmm. any any organization that has defined uh, hierarchical power structures and authority, how easily that can lead to abuse mm -hmm. and power. My question to you is, do you think that uh, this is the case in all pro sports, that there is such an um, emphasized or delineated power structure that leads to these athletes to be abused? Yeah, I think it can. Um, I don't think it does in all cases. It's probably, it's probably more sport dependent, right? So That's I true. doubt it would play as much of a dynamic, I doubt the power dynamics would play as much of a big role in something like basketball, where it is very player heavy. Maybe if you're not as popular of a basketball player, something okay. like that could happen, right? Um, but I don't know that I would necessarily assume or yeah. naturally in, be inclined to think that a, a uh, like a, a Gary VD, right? Like a coach like that, who's like this beloved person would have that type of sway or influence over even like a Lamar Odom, right? Or somebody who's like not as big as like a LeBron or something like that, right? So, yeah. so Kyle Beach was an important player, yeah, right? But he wasn't like he a had, national star. He had right? just been brought right. up from the minors. Right. He was 20 years old at the time, pretty unknown. Yeah, yeah. Um, with reference to the sports right, world, right? Right, right. And so maybe the, that obscurity uh, allows mm -hmm. for a little bit of a more veiled shield, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. But to me, it's less of a thing where it's power dynamic and more of like a like a boys club hmm. mixed with shame conversation. Okay. So, yeah, so those, what do you mean by that? So we understand like what, the, what a male locker room is like, right? Any okay. 
okay. guy who's been in there, the camaraderie, the openness, right? Like the weirdness around all of the stuff yeah. uh, that can be in there, the joking that can be crass and coarse and things like that. And so I think what happens is these types of hyper alpha mm. athletes get together right? And they have to form a team and like figure out how to congeal. And when you are able to hit like a uh, Stanley Cup winning season, those things are so rare. And so all of that energy, right? And all of that excitement and all of that, like nobody wants to rock the boat, right? Mm -hmm. So this kind of thing happens. So it creates kind of this cone of silence and people are just ignoring it because they know that they're winning and winning tends mm -hmm. to cure all problems, uh, at least for a time, it seems like. Right. And so, so that abscond or that uh, combined with the shame that Kyle probably not probably did for sure feel and mm -hmm. experience there plus like being a male right and that kind of thing where it's like you're a hyper alpha kind of kind of the, the epitome of manhood yeah and now like and you're in the top of your class in terms of being in this the hardest league to get into for your specific sport right the right. nhl and so it's like you're just completely stripped and right. you're naked and vulnerable and like all of the experience that would come with that and yeah. the embarrassment and the depth of that right so those things to me would seem like they would just uh, render you voiceless hmm. for that type of an, an experience that, if you're somebody like him. So what are these whole ideas about locker room, this, this almost social covenant mm -hmm. that professionals make with themselves and our perspective then as a culture and society of how we view them, yeah. what do you think that highlights about our perspectives about manhood? Yeah, like it's this idea of like family, right? Like family always takes care of each other and you don't rat family out, right? right? And so this is not the first example of this. You have several... Uh, that kind of come to mind off the top of the head. The most recent one being uh, Urban Meyer, who's now the Jacksonville Jaguars coach, yeah. right? Who protected one of his assistant coaches, who like beat his wife in this like when crazy he was at Ohio piece. State. Yeah, when he was at, at the Ohio State. The uh, Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or Jerry Sandusky, right? With the whole Penn State scenario. Oh, the Penn where State they, one. That's a, were, that's a big one. Tell me a little bit about that uh, one. Yeah. So Joe Paterno, right? The beloved coach Joe Pa. Yeah. Uh, Penn State. He's coached there for seemed like a century. Yeah. He's like yeah, guy Miami's Pat dirt. Riley. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, and so he was aware of the fact that one of uh, his people on his staff, Jerry Sandusky, during like the summer times, they would have like these youth football camps and stuff that would come there and these little boys, 10, 11, 12, you know, that kind of thing. And, and he would rape children, oh my right? Goodness. And that kind of thing. And Joe Paterno was aware of this and covered this up for like, like three decades or something like that. Seriously? Yeah, it might be a little bit off in the time, but I mean, it was such a long really? time and he did nothing about it. And then wow. it came out after Joe Paterno died. And, and part of the reason these things exist is because of that fraternal culture of mm. like closeness protection like yeah it's bad but then insert some awful justification right it's right. like yeah but we're but winning. winning a championship yeah yeah and so Better. can you or or we're in too deep what would happen you know blah 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 right and it's like protect the school protect the brand protect right. the team the protect the, yeah and, and so and and so we have a tendency to like see these things where if these men like speak out right it's seen as selfish right it's seen mm. as like Hey, you're doing that at the expense of the rest of us who That's all have crazy. to deal with this, right? And That's so think crazy. about like even just for the Raider stuff with all the John Gruden things that happened recently, it's like people were talking about like, hey, what impact is that having on the locker room, right? As if that was like right. more important than yes. what was going on, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and so yeah. the idea is like we get around that world and we can out of – not, I don't think all these people have bad intentions, right. right? Of like not wanting things to be bad or not wanting people to get hurt or friends that they genuinely care about, yep. right? Like there's all of those <clears throat> things go into it. And so it just creates this really awful experience for whoever is being violated. Yeah, for sure. Do you think that is one of the differences between um, the experience of men and women? Yeah, I, so from, I mean, the first so, thing that comes to mind there is like the, the team doctor, Right for the USA Women's Gymnast Team, which like I would say about. that maybe seems to be more of a power dynamic. Yeah, issue that that in, one, in, maybe that specific case, right? Uh, I know in like the women's soccer league in America, there's a lot. Oh yeah, I do. Of, I wasn't aware of that. Um, there's a lot of uh, complaints, allegations, coaches, staff. A lot of people are coming up and saying, "Hey, there's there's a lot of harassment." Yeah, I mean that, I, that doesn't surprise me. I don't know about the bit, WNBA. Right? Yeah, I don't I, know. I don't know. Um, but because we still commodify women, right, as correct. a culture. Yeah. And, and so when you get a bunch of them together in a group, like a sports. Under the management of. Uh, of what's going to be largely men. Yeah. Right. Like there is going to be that inherent power structure that is uneven. Right. And when these men control things like salaries, they control mm -hmm. things like endorsements, control like literal livelihood. Right. There, it certainly is a breeding ground. Yeah. For malfeasance that is crazy and so on okay so here's where i'm going with this we have two issues that we've identified 
the the vulnerability or susceptibility of power yeah. to be exploited yeah. to abuse, uh-huh. which we've seen more in, in women. Yeah. And then you have almost this, uh, this, this, I hadn't thought about this, so I'm glad you brought it up. It's almost like it, it, if you're a man and this happens to you, what you feel like you should do is you have to take it for the team. Yeah, yeah. Because there's bigger things at play yeah. here. Um, and because all the people have been pushing towards that singular goal, right? Like correct. when you're a kid who plays a professional sport or makes it into that. You've been that, working that for your 20 years. whole freaking right. life. And all you want is to win that thing. Correct. Right? Um, that, is, that is crazy to me. So I want to talk about two things briefly here. One, what are some, what I'm calling internal pressures? In, in other words, what are the value sets here? How can those value sets be changed, uh, restored? Mm-hmm. So that things like authority and leadership should be, can be seen in, in service of rather than to the, for the exploitation of. And, and then in, in the case of men, something like camaraderie and sacrifice for the team can also be reciprocal where it's that person's also going to be best taken care of. Yeah. Um, and then the second thing is external. In, in other words, you can't convince somebody to care more about people than their money. Right. But you can find them. Yeah. Um, so what are some the non-organic or legislative pressures that can be put to filter out, prevent, mm-hmm. um, and protect mm-hmm. some of these things? What do you think on both the internal and external pressures? Yeah. So from the internal side, right, like this feels like a generational thing that has to be done almost through parenting, right? Where it's yeah. like, like, or like youth sports along the way where it's like right. every coach, every mentor, every authority figure has to take an intentional role of like teaching that character matters as much or more as than performance as competency does yeah, that's, right that's, that's such and, a good phrase. and you can't have one without the other mm. if you want to create some type mm. of systematized balance of yeah. equality in the way that people are treated in their profession yeah. right it's not going to work well uh, and then from the external side it's like so the penn state example to me is a beautiful like if i was the ncaa i would have given penn state the death penalty Right for Meaning that, completely like eliminate them. Their from whole Division football program would not have been done. able to participate. And then all of the recruits, all of the men that were on the team, all of the players, right, that were negatively impacted by that, Penn State would have been forced to continue to pay for their education fully, right, or give them an option to transfer to another university without any fine, right. So you either let them finish out their college degree for free, or you let them transfer to other like places like Bama or Florida or wherever they want to go yeah. to have their shot at trying to make it to the NFL if that's what they wanted yeah. to, right? And so so that way you don't punish the kids for the sins of the adults, the right? That are in, yeah, that are in that kind of role. And so uh, especially when it's something that egregious, right? Mm-hmm. Like anything that we talk about in the realm of sexual assault, if there's any type of cover up, it's like, I don't know. I can think of few worse things. Yeah, it's like 10 years death penalty minimum, right? Like your program can't compete or something like that, yeah. right? combined with jail time right like there yeah. has to be like some type of big thing that like lands on people yeah. for that because you need that internal and external to create Pressures. any type of change yeah. i think that yeah. would be lasting i think about uh maybe parallel but not as bad the way that the the nfl is slowly shifting yeah with some of its social issues yeah i mean that could be internal or external yeah. maybe both yeah maybe they're seeing hey we got to get a little more closer to center on this if we're still going to make billions of dollars or right, maybe right. not i don't know but it's it's working to some degree yeah um and so what would that look like for for this um yeah it's tragic but i definitely think that things need to happen yeah and, and the other thing you would need to do is the ncaa would need to shift some of the power dynamics from the coaches to, Back the, to players, the players right so you got that's an ongoing huge right. conversation yeah and that's a you know alabama nick saban's making what 10 million a year yeah and their players are Not going through paid. food insecurities, right? And they can't even like figure. You can't sell your likeness for fifty bucks, or you know, or you get fined or whatever. But they're getting slowly a uh, hundred thousand dollar bachelor's degree. Yeah, 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 because that's worth it. Uh, um, <laughs> right. So that's kind of peripheral. Yeah. Uh, but how do you think Christians can uniquely inform this issue in society? I mean, we worship the ultimate God of character, right? And, and so, for Christian men and women to take positions of coaching authority Mm. in their, I think specifically like in young leagues, right? In rec leagues and, you know, developmental leagues and schools, like having an opportunity, right? Some of the most uh, dynamic stories you hear of people who like, like Allen Iverson or LeBron James, who had people that like, like these men of great character in their life who would pick them up, who would take them to Mm. practice, who would take them home, who would help out around the Genuine service. Yeah. Like really embodying the character of Christ where it's like servant leadership there of putting not just the 
you know, uh, need to make the, money yeah. ahead of the kid, but knowing that the majority of these kids are never going to go pro. Mm -hmm. And so you need to help them do well in things like their education. So they can be right? okay in life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they can no, then in turn huge. into other positions of authority. And even at the highest levels, I think about Coach Dungey. Yeah, with for the Colts. sure. Yep. Uh, think about Coach uh, Monty Williams uh -huh. with the Suns, uh -huh. outspoken believers, uh -huh. who speak specifically about their service yeah. first. Yeah. Um, that that's amazing to me. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing to me. And this so. is why Christians can't run from culture, right? Right. But this is what it means to be in the world, but exactly. not of it, right? Exactly. In Romans twelve, it's like I agree. You got to get in the trenches, I agree. and you got to lead from the front 100%, with those types of conversations. 100%. Well, I certainly hope that in different spheres of influence that you and I have, that our viewers may have, that we can make an impact yeah, with some sure. of these things. Um, yeah. So, what do you guys think? What are areas that you think may be in your schools, in your churches, in your social spheres? conversations like these can be had things can be implemented to prevent uh, filter and protect yeah um, check us out on the juice app we will see you next time on kt kingdom thinking <laughs>